Hi everybody, this is Greg Bragg from Celestron. Today we're gonna to answer another one of those Dear Celestron questions. This time it's about light pollution. Light pollution is the astronomer's worst friend. If you've been around astronomy, you know that's something we try our best to avoid when we're looking through a telescope, but we know everybody can't do that. So uh, we wanna to try to give you some tips and tricks about what you can do to see objects from your um, backyard or driveway. Um, what is light pollution? Well, light pollution is what we all see. Uh, it, it comes from buildings, it comes from street lights, it comes from car lights, it comes from house lights. Uh, the more and more cities grow, the less and less we have the ability to see through a telescope under those conditions. So what that causes is that causes our eyes to restrict, the pupil in our eyes to restrict. So that lets less light into our eyes. We want to be where it's really dark so our eyes can dilate to their maximum dilation and that gives the rods and cones in your eyes the ability to capture those photons coming from stars and objects in the in the night sky from thousands and millions of miles of light years away. Can we still see those in the city? You can if you do a couple of things. Because there's there's so so few stars visible in the city, one of the things astronomers do uh, if they don't have a um, electronic or computerized telescope is they do what's called star hopping. Many of you have smartphones that give you the ability to look at uh, constellations and stuff like that in the night sky. You hold them up towards the sky and it allows you to find objects and see the planets and the moon and stuff like that. But in order to find the faint objects, we have to be able to use those stars to do what's called star hopping, to bounce around to get to those deep sky objects. And because there's so few stars in the night sky under city lights, we have a hard time finding objects um, through our telescopes uh, and getting our telescopes to those objects. So that, that's the biggest problem. And if you don't have a computerized telescope, it's a bigger challenge than you can imagine. So what we, what we you know, want you to do is, is look at the moon and the planets and try to learn some of the constellations and try to learn where some of the bigger objects are, like Orion's Nebula and Andromeda Galaxy, things like that. Uh, and that will satisfy your, you know, your desire to see through telescopes, uh, even in the city. There are computerized telescopes, obviously, and there are uh, some, computer, some, some telescopes on the market that use smartphone assistance to help you find objects. Um, we just introduced a telescope a couple of years back called the StarSense Explorer that has a little cradle that you put your phone on that you align with your uh, uh, optical tube that gives you the opportunity to find objects by the smartphone technology to tell you where those objects are and move the telescopes to see those objects. Uh, that's a very affordable way to get into an entry-level telescope to find objects in your driveway. Uh, there's actually a feature on the software that says, are you in dark skies? Are you in city? Uh, if you're in the city, then you pick that list of objects and it helps you get to those objects and gives you an opportunity to see those objects even in the city. So that is one way you, you are able to see objects in the city. Computerized telescopes do that as well. Computers, computerized telescopes require an alignment procedure and then you just tell it in the hand box what you want to see and it goes and finds them. It actually will go to that object and you, you should see it in the eyepiece and that, that um, <clears throat> you know, in, in most cases, you'll be able to see the object, but the fainter, fuzzier ones, you won't be able to see because your eyes still aren't dilated enough. So those are things you're gonna encounter in the city, but that, that, that still allows you to see things in the city. If you learn how to star hop, uh, if you know how to get your telescope to the object, there's a good chance you'll be able to see uh, uh, 15 to 20 or 30 objects, you know, at, at any given time through your telescope, even in the city. So. Don't let that deter you from jumping into the hobby because that's a really, really, um, even though the conditions aren't ideal, that is a really good way to do it. So there's a couple of tools that you can add uh, to the telescope, computerized or not, that will help you see even under the, the city light conditions a lot better. There's some um, dew shields that stick out in front of the telescope, usually you know, four or five or six inches in front of the telescope that keep dew off the optics, but it also, keeps that stray light from the street light down the street reflecting off the the mirrors or the the uh, optics in the front of the telescope so if you can use that that will help uh, eliminate some of that light uh, pollution and then you can also use a towel over your head or a blanket over your head uh, once once you get the object in the eyepiece and 
and that helps your eyes uh, also um, dilate as well as avoiding any of that light from uh, either side of you from getting into the eyepiece. A, a good eyepiece with nice eye relief is also helpful, and there are eyepieces that have rubber eye cups that will actually also help the light from odd sides of getting in there and, and disturbing your view as well. Once you get into a city situation, you want to get away from as much light as you possibly can. You want to get, you know, get away from the lights as far as you can, get behind a tree so it blocks that light. Anything that's line of sight direct into your eye is going to keep your eyes from diluting. So you want to try to avoid those things. Um, but the level of light pollution uh, drops off noticeably after midnight. And, and after midnight, between midnight and the time the sun comes up, there's less traffic on the road. Those lights are still on, on the streets, but the big city lights and stuff like that have been turned off because people have gone home from work. So that helps lower that light pollution. And that's a, a pretty good time to view even in your driveway. It's the best time to view even in your driveway after midnight before uh, the sun comes up. So those are the situations with um, city viewing. Uh, obviously, the best thing to do is to get into dark skies. That will allow your pupils to dilate, give you the ability to capture all those photons coming your way, and give you an opportunity to see fainter objects than you can in the city. Uh, there are close by places that you can go, city parks. Um, you can go to state parks if they're not too far away and, and get into a nice dark uh, situation there where Generally, they don't have street lights in the state parks or the city parks, uh, maybe one or two, but generally a lot less. And also try to find where there's trees off, off to the side so that they block the light from that city as well. If you can get near a beach, get near a lake, uh, get in a grassy field, uh, uh, at any time of the year, that's uh, an area where there's less heat coming from. Uh, roads and parking lots and stuff like that, that will also make it a lot better conditions above, uh, above the, uh, up in the sky. So those are the things you want to look for. Uh, try not to use flashlights. Try not to even turn your cell phone on. That affects your night vision, and that's one thing you want to avoid. Uh, there are red flashlights that you use when you get into those darker sky conditions. So uh, you don't have to turn on white light because white light will instantaneously ruin your night vision. Your pupils will restrict down really quickly and you'll have uh, about 15 or 20 minutes before you get that night vision back. So try to avoid that. If you're viewing the moon, the moon is extremely bright. You're going to look at it with one eye. You're going to come away from the eyepiece. That eye is going to be super shut down. The other eye is going to be dilated. So you're going to get this little weird feeling at first. But there are filters that you can use to even lower the brightness of the, the moon. They're called neutral density or moon filters and stuff like that. So those are things you want to try to avoid. Every star party around the country, uh, it generally has their dates set around new moon. And new moon is when the earth is between the sun and the moon. And the moon is not illuminated by the earth, by the sunlight. So that's the time where there's no moon and then the uh, moon doesn't d destroy your night vision. Uh, some star parties try to do them when they're slightly um, uh, crescent so that, that you still get a chance to look at the moon and get some really great views of the moon. Uh, those That's actually the best time to look when there's a quarter or less light on the moon. So you can see the mountains and the valleys of the craters and stuff like that. So that's really the best time. But <clears throat> try to avoid a night where the moon is out and that will help you as well. And then you wanna make sure you're capitalizing on the opportunity to get your eyes dilated as much as possible. So um, those are the things you wanna look for. Those are the things you wanna to try to do. Uh, obviously a computerized telescope or a star, uh, smartphone assisted telescope will give you the best opportunity to see objects in the city, but there are objects in the city you can see uh, without too much trouble. So don't give up on the hobby just because you live in the city. I hope that helped. Uh, I look forward to speaking to you again sometime in the near future. Uh, please keep asking Celestron all your questions and we will um, answer them the best we can. Thank you very much.